Parker is a gold miner. <laughs> We're rich, boys. Get down on your knees. <laughs> Fuck him up. <laughs> we got gold. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank and, you. And I must say, what a film. <laughs> what a film this is. It's so exciting. It's so awesome. So much action. I mean, if you're an action lover, like this is like almost one of the ultimate movies to add to that, you know, top 10 list of must watch movies, especially for action. How long did you have this idea for Sisu? I had it like a couple of years and, and, and I tried to write it like, I, I don't know, four years ago or something, but I all almost like I got something like five pages of it and and I realized that this is gonna be, even though it's a really simple idea it was really hard to write in a way uh, because you have you don't have so, that much dialogue so it was like writing a novel in a way uh, so I dropped it and and they did some other stuff but uh, when the pandemic came and, and everything went to shit I got angry enough to pick it up again and I wrote it in two months. Yeah, two months. That's that's pr that's pretty quick to to write something the first draft. Definitely. And it wasn't only the first draft, it was all, also the final draft. Well that's really awesome. What inspired you to select that story, come up with that story and tell it on such a you know massive screen? Well all my influences are coming from old Westerns and and uh First Blood, because I, I love movies of, of uh, people you shouldn't be fucking with in a way like uh, that that audience and everyone will be surprised what kind of a man you are dealing with. Uh, it somehow makes me feel really good every time. Yeah, watching this movie, you don't know what type of man this really is, you know, until he unleashes what he's capable of, which is really cool. And like you said, you're influenced by Stallone and Rambo. What other type of, you know, old school movies really influenced your career? What type of movies you really loved growing up? I, I watched a lot of action, like James Cameron films, like Terminator 2 and, and uh, uh, True Lies and Lethal Weapons and, well, all that stuff. Die Hards, of course, and... and uh, I'm a I'm a huge action fa fan, and that's what I've been doing my <laughs> to my life, like just watching movies. Yeah, we have the exact same taste in movies. Everything you mentioned are my favorites. We have, love the same action stars, I believe, and all the movies are the same. You ever thought about maybe you know Stallone has talked about he wants to revisit Rambo. You ever thought maybe pitching your ultimate Rambo movie and possibly doing one? Well, I'm. I'm somehow like a bit even offended of Last Blood, like because I didn't like that one. Uh, it would uh, like it's like you have First Blood and then you have Last Blood. I would like to make a new Last Blood, <laughs> like in a proper way. <laughs> no, I'm with you on that. We need to get a, a better Rambo movie, especially in the later years of of his life, and. Uh, the scenery is beautiful. You f you filmed this in Finland, correct? Yep. And is all of that we see on screen real? It is. It's the it's the northest place in Finland you can get. It's it's far away, and uh, it's it's really beautiful, and yet it's really hard place to shoot, but but it it definitely pays off with with. Even though it's hard, it's it, it looks really amazing. Yeah, it looks amazing, especially if you see it on a big screen. And you know what type of struggles come with filming in such a harsh environment? Well, of course, the first problem is to get everyone there, like and all the tanks and and cars and and also the movie movie equipment and and the crew and uh, because we were basically in the middle of nowhere and it's really hard to get. Uh, so there were many days when we were just transporting the gear to the the location and and uh, 
and it was really windy and because there's no trees it's it's windy and it's there's all kinds of things but but we were lucky enough to have have like a clear skies during the whole process because it as easily would have been like really foggy every day so we couldn't like see any of the scenery but it it turned out just the way i i hoped it would because it it looks like a like an old time western in a way with with the other land like really open landscape yeah it looks amazing definitely you know it's a harsh environment but i kind of want to go visit that place you know it's just really beautiful to take pictures and stuff like that it seems like they're very cinematic Tell me about this lovable dog y'all found. Where did you find this cute little puppy to be part of this feature film? Well, the story behind the dog is that uh, when I wrote the script, uh, I thought it, it it has to be like a really manly and a beast of a dog in a way. But I was asking from the actor, like the Yorma, that to send me some photos of how he looks now, how his body is, how his beard and hair and stuff like that. And his dog was in the background uh, and the producer saw the photo and, and he was saying to me that we need the, that that should be the dog. And I was like, <laughs> it most definitely will not be that dog because it's too cute. But when I thought it for a second, I, I realized that it of course needs to be just like that because it, it gives you like a big contrast and, and uh, also, uh, it makes you think differently of Adami because he has just so nice dog. Yeah, it's definitely a scene stealer. You know, <laughs> that dog is going to get very popular very soon. <laughs> so do you think at the end of this movie, there's possibilities of this world opening up and seeing this character follow through with other stuff? Or do you think this is just a one and done film? Uh I have an idea for the sequel, and uh, because I think it's interesting to think what would Artami do when he's like absolutely rich, because I think it doesn't make him happy, because he's a man who wants to do things, and, and when you just have a lot of money. I, I, I would think he probably would drink himself to death in a really nice hotel somewhere in like Spain or something. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I have an idea what to do about that, but I don't know. Will I do it? But let's see. Yeah, when I was watching it, you know, he's looking for gold and I think he's enjoying it most with actually looking for it, not finding, like actually finding it, the process of mm -hmm. looking for it. It looks like he was really enjoying the process of growing through all the, the, the sand and the rocks and looking for it. Mm -hmm. Like he really enjoyed working with his hands and stuff like that. So he definitely can't sit around and enjoy what he found. <laughs> he likes to be no. doing things. It's just like that. So what is next for you now? Um, once this hits theaters very soon, which I know audiences are going to go crazy for and want to see more from you, what, what do you plan on doing next? I have one sci-fi film, which we might start shooting even this year. Uh, um, and I'm writing uh, more like really bad kind of action film. And there's also a lot of offers from Hollywood. And uh, I don't know. I just have to see what happens first. Yeah, they're going to be knocking on your doors. Hollywood's going to bring all the tanks and everything and knock on your door and say, we want you to make a movie for us, for sure. I know that. It's so what, already happened. <laughs> for sure. And one last thing, for people not sure about watching this movie or don't understand what it's about, in a couple of sentences, what would you tell audiences, you know, what this movie is about to go watch it? It's about a guy who is the meanest motherfucker on this planet, but the poor Nazis, they don't know it yet, but they will know it later on. <laughs> that is perfect. That is the perfect tagline for this movie, for sure. It was really <laughs> fabulous to speak to. Great time watching the movie. I'm definitely looking forward to your next projects and we'll see each other soon. Yeah, thank you.